I want to try to bury this idea of objective morality once and for all. It came to me in a dream, and so it must be true. Seriously, I had one of those flashes of inspiration, and though it might have been the cheese I ate before bed, I think this is so obvious that I'm surprised it's not been offered before. Or if it has, I've missed it. As always, let's start with defining morality. Morality comes to us from the Latin moralitas, meaning manner, character, or proper behaviour. For me, it is that behaviour which is deemed acceptable or right or good, whichever you prefer. And morality can be found in the branch of philosophy called ethics. Many Christian apologists will tell you that there are certain behaviours which are objectively immoral. And they will leap to extreme instances of behaviour to add an appeal to emotion to their argument. Here's a fact. Evolution. Unless you are uneducated, willfully ignorant, or intellectually dishonest, then you accept the reality of evolution. And the same goes for the age of the earth. The fact is that humans have been on this earth for something like 0.004% of its history. And so if you want to discuss the objectivity of morality, forget humans, and instead look at the animal and vegetable kingdom with which we share our genetic ancestry. Would you say that a tapeworm is objectively immoral? Or a locust, which can destroy crops and cause famine? Or a cat, which plays with a mouse, refusing to let it die until it's had its fun? Or hyenas, who laugh and mock their prey before killing it? That was a joke. The hyenas laughed at it. What about cordyceps, a fungus famous for attacking ants, but evolved in different forms to attack many insects by affecting their behaviour and finally consuming them? in the process growing a fruiting head, which then releases spores to infect many more insects. Nature abounds with behaviour which we say is natural. Animals tearing their prey limb from limb while still alive, parasites growing inside and consuming other organisms, the male lion who after taking over the pride kills all the cubs of the previous pride leader, the female rat who eats the litter of other rats and even their own kits if they are wounded or deformed, Infanticide has been observed in monkeys and is thought to be quite common amongst both male and female chimpanzees. Nature read in tooth and claw. Evolution, if anything, is an arms race. Natural selection refers to many things, but in a world where you are always both the hunter and the hunted, behaviour which is beneficial to your genetic survival can be viewed as subjectively good from an evolutionary perspective, but only subjectively, unless you feel empowered to commit to the fact that every evolutionary line which was ever terminated was good, and every surviving species is the best that we could wish for. A final thought. If you've ever gone hiking, camping, fishing, hunting, or simply to the zoo or safari park, then it's likely that you did it at least in part to see the natural world. That is, what nature looks like without humans infesting it. Our ability to overcome natural pressures by evolving communication and complex tool use has resulted in us spreading through the ecosystem like a parasitic fungus. If you want something that is objectively good behaviour for humans, the closest to it I could suggest would be the creation of an incurable, highly contagious and fatal human pathogen. We philosophising pongos might exchange arguments on ethics, but to claim that anything is objectively anything, whilst limiting ourselves to the consideration of one out of millions of species, is arrogance in the extreme. Thanks for watching.